Yeah. And I, I mean, what you guys have done to date is, is really good. Like the approach that you guys have taken in terms of the influencer marketing uh, approach has been really, really solid. Um, so like you said, you've got it in the hands of people who are in the OCR. So that's uh, for people who don't know OCR. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's this obstacle race, uh, course race. Um, so that'd be like Spartan racing, uh, Tough Mudder, and um, Mud Hero. So that that was pretty big. And um, yeah, these influencers kind of just wanted something different. So we would supply them with units and they help us um, post on their social media and share with um, their followers. And we kind of gained some traction there. That was yeah. And so the influencers that you guys are using are mostly, you know, smaller uh, influencers. They're not the ones, not the Kim Kardashians that have got millions yeah. of followers. These are people who have uh, tens of thousands, maybe into the hundreds of thousands of people who um, they're engaging with in some form or another in social. And so right. um, that is a good strategy because those micro influencers oftentimes have got more clout than what some of the big ones are. So when a, a Kim Kardashian uh, mentions a product or uses a product and highlights that within one of her videos um, or one of her social posts, she doesn't get the same level of engagement out of the followers as what somebody who's a micro uh, influencer does. Because with the micro influencers, the people who are following them are not following them because of the fame or anything. They're following them because they're legitimately interested in what that person is doing or saying or, or um, what they're teaching or what their philosophy is or whatever. And so those people who are following those influencers actually have better click-through rates oftentimes in the promoted posts of the campaigns the products and so on so the strategy that you guys stumbled upon is actually a pretty good one in terms of the influencer side of things and on top of that you don't have to pay the big dollars to get those people to post oftentimes it's just supplying them with uh, some product, right? So you just have the cost of yeah. goods and the shipping to get it over to them oftentimes. And I imagine that's the strategy that you guys have been employing, right? You're not paying big dollars for these people to post, right? No, we can't really afford it. So we're really trying to find the most efficient way to get the word out there. And, and uh, I 100% would agree with what you just said. It's, it's those people have a close knit community and then people really trust what they say. So these smaller influencers, maybe they have 10,000, 5,000, but I, I see a lot of um, uh, click through and sales from that. So yeah. I don't think it's about reaching the biggest name and, and uh, paying the big bucks to kind of spread the word. You know, sometimes people, like you said, just follow because that's the thing to do and not really paying attention to their content. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's about being smart with that spander, that the time and the effort that you're putting into it.